Hey folks, welcome back to Studio 59. In this video, I'll be walking you through the entire decontamination, paint correction, and ceramic coating process from start to finish on my personal vehicle, the F-150. And be sure to stick around to the end to see the ceramic coating's crazy water beating capabilities in a rainstorm. I always start the decontamination process with the wheels as they're the dirtiest part of the vehicle. If I were to start the wheels after washing the paint, I would end up spraying dirt and brake dust back all over the car, and if I didn't notice that dirt and didn't rinse it off, I could end up rubbing it into the paint with a drying towel and causing scratching. So for those reasons, I always start with the dirtiest parts of the car and save the paint for last. So in certain situations, I like to spray down the vehicle with a light dilution of McKees 37 as a pre-rinse. This helps emulsify or break down the dirt and it also encapsulates it, which is just another means of preventing scratching. I let this dwell for a minute or two and then I'll give the whole vehicle a thorough pressure rinse, really taking my time to get as much dirt and grime off as possible before the hand wash. Soaking the car in snow foam, I'll go around with the detail brush and agitate all the tighter areas that the wash mitt wouldn't be able to reach. After the hand wash, I use an iron remover to break down any iron filings embedded in the paint, which can come from industrial fallout or brake dust from other vehicles on the highway. If you've ever seen a car that has little orange spots on it or wheels that are caked in black dots, that's iron. And at the microscopic level, iron filings are very sharp and jagged, so it's important that we get rid of them before claying the vehicle, again to reduce the chances of scratching. Paint is actually very similar to skin in that it has pores and can be exfoliated. Some contaminants, such as tar or sap, can bond to the surface or get stuck in those pores. And what the clay bar does is it knocks these contaminants loose and peels them out of the paint, similar to the face masks that people use to cleanse their skin. The clay bar is slightly abrasive, so it's very important to use a proper lubricant to prevent scratching. It's important to get all the water out of the tight spots because that water can be shaken loose when compounding or polishing, 
and if there's dirt in that water and it runs down into the pad without me seeing, the machine would be pushing and spreading that dirt around the paint rapidly, causing scratching and the more work for myself to go back and fix it. So the reason I'm taping is to protect any plastics or rubbers from getting stained or burnt during the machine polishing process. Some guys don't use tape and take care of the stains afterwards, but in my experience they're an absolute pain to get out, so taping for me eliminates that problem altogether. So taping itself can easily take over 45 minutes depending on the complexity of the vehicle, but to me it's worth putting the time into this rather than spending double the time trying to fix things that could have been avoided. So now that the truck has been completely decontaminated, I can start the machine polishing process. I'll start by testing different pad and polish combinations to see what works best for this specific paint. Anyone who says there is one combination that works for them every time is either really lucky or they aren't actually getting the best results possible. Every car has different paint that reacts differently to different pads and different polishes, even cars from the same manufacturer. So I always test a few combinations to see what works for the paint I'm currently working on. In this case, a Roops wool pad and Sonax Ultimate Cut got the major defects out, and the yellow Roops pad with Sonax Perfect Finish worked as a great cutting and finishing polish for most of the car. The only areas that really needed deep cutting were the bedsides, the hood, and some parts of the doors. So the B-pillars are typically a very soft plastic which can be difficult to work with. I always start with the least aggressive method and decide if I want to get more cut after that. They can be super finicky and if the vehicle is well used and pretty scratched up, they're not usually going to come out 100% perfect. So this is a classic example of the detailer's dilemma, where as detailers we want everything to be perfect and have no scratches at all, but the reality is that every time we're polishing, we're actually removing paint. So we have to decide, is it worth taking X amount of paint off with the potential to burn through the clear coat just to remove a scratch, or is it in the vehicle's best interest to leave the scratch and maintain the integrity of the clear coat to protect the paint and allow for more polishing later in the vehicle's life? So now that the paint is as close to perfect as possible, I'll wipe down the entire truck with an isopropyl alcohol to get rid of any remaining polishing oils so the coating has a perfectly clean surface to bond to. So the coating I'm applying is a ceramic graphene coating that has a durability rating of up to 7 years. The reason I use graphene infused coatings is because they're supposed to help reduce water spotting, which is a big problem that a lot of ceramic coatings have. The primary reason for putting a coating on a vehicle is for protection. Ceramics protect the clear coat from the elements including tar, tree sap, iron fallout, and harsh chemicals for years, whereas most waxes really only last anywhere from 3 to 6 months. 
So we've all probably seen those videos of the coating manufacturers lighting their coatings on fire, throwing rocks at them, pretty much acting like they're bulletproof. But coatings can still get damaged, they can still get scratched, whether it's driving through a bush or improper wash methods. However, if you take care of your coating and maintain it, it will definitely last as long as they claim. That obviously depends on mileage as well. And since coatings are so resistant to contaminants, it makes the cleaning process almost effortless and it really makes washing your car enjoyable, which I think is something a lot of enthusiasts would appreciate. Folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. The amount of hours that go into not only the detailing, but the filming and editing on top of it turns into days and days of work. So if you enjoyed it, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. Let me know what you liked, disliked, and if you have any questions, drop those in the comments as well. And I'll see you guys on the next one.